Hello everybody, this is Sergey Baklikov and you're watching Real Russia Channel. Right now I'm in the historical city center of Donetsk, DNR, Donetsk People's Republic. I came here because, you know, I came with Ronald from the United States, from Texas, and here is Russell Texas Bentley. He is also from Texas. And you know, um, I decided to come here because looking at these American guys who came here, who cares about what happens here, I decided, so why I freaking have to sit at home? So if these guys question more what's going on, so why I have to sit? So I came here as well. And yeah, I can't hide that I was a little bit scared about coming here because uh, just it's hard to believe, but in several miles from here, there's the front line, there's the battles going. But um, the first uh, very frank thing for me was, uh, I, I really never expected to see this. Look, I'm in the central plaza. This is a Lenin Square, Lenin Plaza. This is uh, the center of the historical city center. So it means center, center. And uh, you see the sun is shining. Uh, the dramatical theater working, restaurants, cafes, bars, let's say there's an Irish pub, you can get a, a Guinness there, so here is, uh, you can rent the Electromobile for your kids, people are working around, and you know what's the thing, it's just an interesting psychological thing, is that, you know, by the words of locals, people never st stop their social life, because if they would do that, they would just go crazy. So it seems like people are just accepted that they can die, but they prefer better to die instead of, you know, get into the corner of their apartments. So it just makes no sense. If the war will come, you know, it will come even in, in your apartment. Everybody dies, but not everybody lives. And the people of Donbass know how to live. We set a good example for the world. You know, we are peaceful people, we are friendly people, but if Nazis come, we try and reason with them, we try to appeal to their humanity. If that doesn't work, we kick their ass. So you came here yet in December 2014 and now became the residence of DNR with the DNR passports. What was your main motivation to come here? I wanted to come here to fight fascism and to help the good people of Donbass, and that's what I've done. Uh, as a soldier, as a correspondent, an information warrior, and also as a uh, uh, director of a humanitarian aid fund, we've helped a lot of orphans, a lot of uh, pensioners, uh, people that have been wounded by the war, and uh, it's a great job. I love my new country. I am a citizen of the Donetsk People's Republic, and this is my country, and I will defend it. What about you, Ron? What was your motivation to come here? Well, pretty much the same thing. I was interested in what was happening in Ukraine, starting from the very beginning with the uh, Maidan. At first, I really didn't understand what was going on and how it all started, but as time went on, I learned more about it and got a better understanding of what was going on. And I realized, uh, I realized after some time that really the, the good guys are on this side of the border. And these people here, they're not, they're not occupiers. These, this is their land. They've been here for hundreds of years and they're not going to be pushed out. Right now, the people on the other side want to push these people out, push them back to Russia. And they're saying, fuck it. No, this is our land. We're going to stay here and fight for it, even if we have to die. And I, I respect that. Next to the square of Lenin, in a peaceful time here, it used to be a McDonald's, just an official McDonald's. But now there's uh, actually the same place, but which is called Don Mac. And that's where we now will have a lunch. This is uh, Don Mac, and everything here looks absolutely the same as in the McDonald's but just little different names let's say big tasty here is grand tasty and big mac is big mac through k big instead of g do you think the taste uh, it's about good the it's same? not exactly the same there's a, a little bit of difference in the sauce i mm -hmm. think yeah 
It was a nice lunch in Don Mac, which is actually the same as McDonald's. There's definitely all the same suppliers. Yep. Run had a Big Mac. You know, they talked about when they were going to reopen these places as uh, Don Mac. They said they were going to change the name of the Big Mac to the Afto Mac. But they didn't. But it's pretty good. One great thing about the Don Mac, uh, you can get a beer with your burger here. People still living no matter what. So that's why DNR have to win finally, right? Yeah. People of Donbass, uh, they're not afraid of the Ukrainian army or anybody else. Uh, we want peace, but uh, we will never uh, kneel down before fascists, never. Donetsk is a real great city. No wonder, you know, actually it was uh, all set for the Euro 2012 football games. And this is uh, Donetsk Palace, the most expensive hotel in this city and one of the best in Europe. Europe. Transport here, nice, fast, and clean. And uh, trolleybus, uh, three rubles. It's uh, like ten cents, I take cash? or even less, yeah, I got like five cents. We'll jump off at this next step. And now here is a little surprise right in the center of Donetsk such a monument to the Beatles Man, you've been a naughty boy, you let your face grow long. This is the Eggman. That is the walrus. <laughs> Alright, so we're here, right behind the big central church on Otyoma. There's a little park. You can see cool murals. There's a lot of cool murals here in Donetsk. And now we're gonna go to the Kritorinak, get some souvenirs, DNR flag, patches, maybe some cool t-shirts. It's actually like oh. a market. Yeah, open market. So we came to the open market. We got some cool shirts. We got some army patches. Donetsk People's Republic shirts. 11th Infantry, the old Vostok Battalion. Um, these guys are going to be the coolest guys in Texas and in St. Petersburg with these DNR shirts. Rush hour in Donetsk. Riding in a Soviet room. It's the way to go, man. Three rubles get you all the way across town. There's never any traffic jams in Donetsk. When it's rush hour, the trolley bus just gets a little more crowded. It's cool. Yeah. Don Bass Arena, owned by oligarch Akhmetov. Got closed down when the war first started. The whole uh, Donbass Shakhtar football team moved to Kiev. Maybe they're a little bit yellow. Maybe they were just doing it for the money. Now they play out of Kiev underneath the fascist boots. Uh, Donbass Arena is closed, but the Donetsk People's Republic is still free. This is the monument to the liberators of Donbass. This area, all the way to Rostov, all the way to Volgograd, which was then called Stalingrad, was occupied by the German Nazis during the Second World War. 
in the city of Donetsk before the war, before the German invasion, 450,000 people lived. When the Germans were driven out 700 days later from Donetsk, only 150,000 people were still here. Well over 100,000 of them were murdered by the Nazis while they occupied Donetsk. Well over 100,000 in less than two years were murdered in this city alone. Um, so when the Soviet Red Army came and liberated, drove the Nazis out, the German Nazis out, the people here were real glad to see them. So we built a monument to those heroes that liberated this land, this Russian land, and we will not forget what our grandfathers did. The Museum of the Great Patriotic War, mm -hmm. which is a part of the Second World War. Kazakhstan. This section of the museum uh, is about our war, the Donbass War, 2014, still going on in 2018. These are the heroes that have died. Givi, Motorola, both heroes, heroes of the Donetsk People's Republic. Right over here is a section for the guys of Sudvremeni. This is my old unit, Sudvremeni, the essence of time. I knew all of these guys. These three guys here, they were killed in one day on January 17th at the monastery. Uh, these two guys were killed about a month later, right near the monastery. We will visit this monastery today. Mm -hmm. And then these two guys were killed uh, in Spartak, uh, at the position that I also served at, uh, Blizna. Suzdremeni uh, has a great uh, record as uh, real good uh, special forces soldiers here in the Nova Russian Army. I'm very proud to have served in that unit. Vostok Battalion, Company Sudvremeni. This is the Forged Figures Park in Donetsk. It's filled with metal sculptures made with Donetsk steel by Donetsk blast blacksmiths. It's a very popular park. There's a couple of hundred different sculptures in here. Some very intricate, very beautiful. It's part of the heritage of Donbass, uh, the steel from, made from the coal mines and uh, it's one of, one of the places we're real proud of. It's a beautiful little park. Let's check it out. One of the things that they're doing in Donbass these days is they're taking old grad missile casings, old artillery shells, and turning them into art. Now, as you can see, these are actually artillery shells. Down here, also artillery shells. So this sculpture dedicated to Euro 2012 football championship.
and this is an Irish pub next to Dramatical Theater where you can get some Guinness and some Irish whiskey too. Now we peacefully enjoy enjoy our drinks. If we were in any other city of Russia, it would be just great, but weird about certainly this city is that in the same time now just in a several miles from here there goes still the battles the war that's where we will go now of course not on the front line but as much close as we can and just 10 minutes ride by car and we will see absolutely other Donetsk And I just hope this shit will over very soon. Yeah. Let's drink for these guys. Yeah.